He helped in their migration to Australia. He formed a, a committee to build the Preston Mosque. He also established a board of imams yes. and uh, the marriage celebrancy, Islamic marriage celebrancy, new uh, policies and laws for us. And another thing is to bury them and, and have a funeral service according to the Islamic Sunnah. Sheikh Fahmi. Sheikh Fahmi. May Allah have yes. a rahmah on his soul. Yeah. Sheikh Fahmi is, uh, a lot of young people probably don't know who Sheikh yes. Fahmi is. Oh, they're that. Yeah. Maybe we can start by just saying briefly who Sheikh Fahmi yeah, is. Maybe we'll, yeah, maybe I'll get you Allah to start. Allah, 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 Allah. Rahmatullah, he's passed away now. So uh, Sheikh Fahmi is one of the most senior imams in Australia, longest standing imams who served the community in Australia. His main place was in uh, Preston Mosque. And Preston Mosque was, the, I think, the first mosque in Victoria. There's a debate between that mosque and the Carlton Mosque. But even with the Carlton Mosque, he was uh, he took part. Yeah, he was exactly. Right. Yeah, so this man, Sheikh Fahmi, uh, he came here in, this, in the early 60s and helped the, the community. He helped in their migration to Australia, helping them with their skills, their work, uh, making a living here in Australia. Not only that, he formed a, a committee to build the Preston Mosque. At that time, there were multicultural communities all, of all nationalities, of all backgrounds. You had the Albanians, the Turkish, the Somali Somalians weren't there yet, but I think there was a representative. And all the different types of Arabs, uh, all sorts of nationalities came together in that one house it used to be. It used to be a small house which they bought it as a community. And uh, they just looked at themselves as Muslim brothers and sisters. That's, that's all it was. There was nothing more than that. Sheikh Fahmi, rahmatullah alayhi, he managed to, by the will of Allah, establish new uh, policies and laws for us here in Australia through lobbying and through speaking to uh, MPs and the government. Just to give a few examples is the marriage celebrancy, Islamic marriage celebrancy. So there wasn't any religious Islamic marriage celebrancy that people can get married by Islamic way. And he was one of those who pioneered it. And oh, well, now we can yeah. get ourselves recognized by the Australian law as an uh, Islamic marriage for anybody who wants to get married. Another thing he did, with the help, of course, of many of our brothers and sisters, many of them have passed away now. So, <laughs> whoever, as the Prophet ﷺ says, man sanna sunnatan hasana falahu ajruha wa ajru man amila biha. Whoever initiates a good thing that Allah loves, then he will have its reward, and everyone else who acts upon it will have its reward, and they will get a share of the reward. Amen. So it's like an investment. Amen. So another thing he did was the burial. Muslims didn't have a burial that we could uh, bury our uh, loved ones in one Muslim area. That's one thing. And another thing is to bury them and, and have a funeral service according to the Islamic Sunnah way. And uh, first the Muslims were buried in, in a plastic bag. It's great. Black, and black plastic bag had to be. Plastic bag it has to be with other conditions. Originally so, it was in coffins? Originally apparently. There used to be plastic bag in coffins, yeah. I mean, uh, burying a Muslim in coffin is not uh, forbidden in Islam. You can still do that, but obviously the sunnah, the, the, the recommended way is to return back to, yeah, to the soil. soil yeah. uh, but within the kafan, you know, the white yes, material, yes, yes. that wasn't allowed in that time. Or you can put the material, but we're in a plastic bag. And uh, we found that a little bit disrespectful and humane to our loved ones. So according to Islam, he uh, pioneered this as well. So now sure. we have a Muslim cemetery of our own, uh, just like the, the Christians do and the Jews do. And... Uh, we get to do our funerals in the way that we want to bury it, alhamdulillah. That's two of the things. He also established a board of imams yes. and uh, many other Allah. Islamic organizations. Allah Akbar. Uh, the, the list goes on with Sheikh Fahim, yeah. He was like a father to me, actually. People sometimes yeah. thought that he was my father. Allah. And I worked with him for years at the Preston Mosque as his right-hand man. And then he tried to train me. He gave me uh, a training in how to become a marriage celebrant myself. I used to go with him and learn from him. His way, yeah, he married, how he, spoke. he married me. He, yeah, he married me as yeah. well. Uh, the beautiful thing about him, which I learned, he was one of the role models in my life, one of them. Yeah. And uh, I advise my younger brothers and sisters that you can't do this on your own. If you want success, you need to have different types of uh, interactions and relationships around you. You can't yeah, yeah. just have one person 100%. or just a friend who is your age, yeah. doesn't know much more than you. You know, the Quran mentions about uh, several, about six or seven different types of company that people have and all of them have a benefit in some way some of them are not good benefit so Sheikh Fimi was one of those uh, companies we call a wali for me a wali means almost like a guardian but also a mentor someone who is older who has more experience in life is not the type that I would go out and uh, 
have a nice, uh, you know, a party with if I wanted to, <laughs> because he's much older than me. He's about like three times my age he was, rahmatullahi But he's the person I would go when I'm down, when I need uh, help, when I need guidance, when I need to understand the community, when I'm when it's rough for me. I do remember once he was in the mosque, when somebody called the press the mosque and said, uh, um, there is a bomb in the mosque, you better run. So I rushed to, from my other office to his office and uh, I said, yeah, ima- yeah, yeah, Sheikh, they said there's a bomb here. He was writing something and was really into it and then suddenly he just stopped everything. He sat back and relaxed. And he had a beautiful smile on his face. He like he was Allah. totally at he peace. He wasn't rattled. Allah. And I said to him, there's a bomb. They're saying there's a bomb. And he said, looked at me, gave me a beautiful smile. You know how he was yeah, full of white <laughs> hair. And just looked at me and said, Marhaban bi illah. Well, <laughs> welcome to the decree of Allah. If Allah wills it, this is the time we're going to go. We're going to go. Welcome. Allah wants us back. I'm happy to go. And he just relaxed. That really calmed me down. And the news was obviously false, which showed me that he had a lot of experience and wisdom and how to understand false news and how to shift and, and sift between what people say. Uh, he, he, he struggled a lot with people. So I watched him, how he dealt with, uh, how he would repel and reply to people who had uh, rudeness and insults. He taught yeah. me a lot in that way, and that sort of uh, helped me uh, calibrate and balance myself as a young person. Yeah, well. The biggest thing is that he, he, he knew how to talk to the public. He wasn't the most knowledgeable man. There were many other scholars who were much more knowledgeable than him. But knowledge is not enough. You have to have wisdom and know how to yeah. apply that knowledge in the right space. You have to know your audience. He represented us in the media a lot. Mashallah, and he, he was did. always there and managed to diffuse any conflict that rose in the media and any uh, kind of uh, a sensationalization that was uh, being picked up, such as the time of Islamophobia. I remember September 11, he had yes. a big, uh, the Gulf War and so on. He, he flew to Canberra. He flew to Canberra. He, he was a man who did not sit down. Yeah, he did not, subhanAllah. We shared the same thing, me and you. So subhanAllah, I see him as a father figure myself. As you know, we... I remember, I think my first meeting point with you was when I was on the board with Sheikh Fahmi those days. And uh, how, how, how old do you know? Really? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, um, I'm 46 now. 46. So yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm the only four thing year, going for me is uh, they say I don't look at, I don't look at, but I hope so. Subhanallah. Well, I remember you as a younger chap at, at, at Preston Masjid. Yeah. Subhanallah. Yeah. Cause yeah. remember we used to have the Australian Islamic Foundation uh, I, remember. Board, I remember we set yeah, up you guys uh, were part of it yeah and Sheikh yeah, Fahmi rounded you yeah, guys so, up yeah, yeah. And he forced me with my ear ah like, <laughs> uh, you're coming I said Sheikh leave me out of it it's like okay, I'll do the back end stuff and he said no 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 you're going to be on that yeah. Allah, Wallahi, no, no, we no, miss no. him yeah, Wallahi. I mean.